Hello everybody, I am Jared Ross, a genie vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to 23andMe DNA, my Cape Verdean ancestry by Fun and Budget with Tanisha Davis. Now, I am not familiar with this channel. It is a somewhat small channel, 27.9 thousand subscribers, so actually little bit close to uh, my size of a channel. This channel seems to be focused around travel, money, real estate. Don't really know much about her. I'm guessing she has a Cape Verdean ancestry. And honestly, most of what I know about Cape Verdeans comes from the Henry Louis Gates Jr. PBS program, African American Lives 2, where he had Peter Gomes on as a guest who uh, his father was from Cape Verde. For those who don't know, uh, Cape Verde is part of Portugal. It's uh, these Portuguese islands, and I believe they're closer to Africa. If I remember correctly, it's basically like the Canary Islands, just the Portuguese version, which I believe they're south of the Canary Islands. So it's off of the west coast of Africa. But my understanding is these islands are very mixed. So there's a lot of African ancestry, I would assume mostly West African, but there's also a lot of European, which I would assume is most likely Iberian ancestry. And then interestingly enough, for the Peter Gomes episode, when they did his Y-DNA, they were able to find out that it was a uh, Y-DNA signature, which connected to many Sephardi Jewish families. So it would also be interesting to see, does she get any sort of Jewish ancestral reading? Uh, because I don't know if that if there was a Jewish community in the Cape Verde Island. So if anyone knows about uh, Jewish history in Cape Verde, if there is any, comment below. Let me know. That'd be interesting. But I'm really not going to say much else. Uh, but before we do jump into the video, please be sure to give it a like. That really does help me out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications on future videos. But with all of that fun stuff said, let's go ahead and watch the video. Welcome back to my channel, Fun and Budget. I am Tanisha, and in this video, I want to go over a specific portion of my 23andMe ancestry. And this was actually requested from me from a subscriber. <laughs> they asked if I can talk specifically about what 23andMe has to say about my Cape Vert ancestry. Okay. Is that how you pronounce it? Cape Vert? I thought it was Cape Verde, but I also, you know, could be pronounced differently. So comment below if, uh, if it's pronounced differently than the way, than the way I am, if it's Cape Vert is the way she said it, I think. And um, some may pronounce it as Cape Verde. Oh, but well, the there thing you go. <laughs> about it is a little background is my paternal grandfather is actually Cape Verdean. Okay. Of Cape Verdean descent. And he So she's gonna be so she she'd have about a quarter of her DNA coming from the Cape Verde ancestry. Has um passed away and his name was Eddie Resendez. Okay. And so it was super interesting to me that when I looked at my 23 and me ancestry results, it actually showed my Cape Verdean lineage. Ancestry.com did not show that specifically. Okay. Okay. So the part we're going to look at is this piece yeah. right here. Okay. So yeah, they, they're connecting that through their communities to Cape Verde. Um, she mentioned how she wasn't the biggest fan of Ancestry. I'd be interested to see if she did that comparison, especially because Ancestry has done multiple updates since she did her video, which is just a little bit over a year old. It was done August 24th, 2020. So, you know, it's September 2020, the end of September 2020 when I'm shooting this. So there was just a big update last week from Ancestry, and it's possible that now they are defining Cape Verde as one of their communities, um, especially because Cape Verde being islands, often we find island populations will be an endogamous population just because when you're on an island, there's not as many people to um, have a family with. And so it becomes common for a lot of people to be related in multiple ways and often to be marrying and having children with their cousins. 
Um, you know, even if it's like third or fourth cousins. But at the same time, if these are islands where there's been a lot of migration and trade and travel and all sorts of people coming through, that might not be as much of an issue just because there's been so many population groups coming through and so much change in DNA. Here, where it shows you Cape Verde specifically, okay? And this says Senegambian and Guinea, Guinean. I think I'm pronouncing this right. And it has Brava and Cape Verde plus one region. So we're going to click on this. Mm -hmm. And this is also freaking interesting to me, especially now that my grandfather is no longer here. It's amazing that this was actually picked up in my DNA. Now, let me say this, guys. This is 23andMe. Ancestry does not break it down like this. Yeah, this is also having to do with their community stuff. And each website breaks things down differently. They use different studies. So a lot of people will do this where they say, you know, well, I like 23andMe better because it, they, they give me more information. And sometimes, yes, they may give you more specific breakdowns that are correct. But that doesn't necessarily make Ancestry worse, um, especially considering that it all depends on what ancestral backgrounds you're looking for because each different company each different dna test they have different population groups where they're a bit stronger in being able to read that than others and then when you come down to the whole communities database and the way they do that that mostly depends on the genetic matches of yours in that database and Ancestry is a much larger database. So sometimes you can actually get a lot more out of Ancestry depending on your background. And then the same thing with, you know, my heritage. Uh, I know a lot of people with Eastern European uh, backgrounds have often found they like my heritage because it does Eastern European really well and it has a larger Eastern European database. And then with my heritage, they break down different uh, Jewish ancestral backgrounds. So they try to break down Ashkenazi, Sephardi, Mizrahim, and some other ones. So I get where she's coming from because, yeah, they're reading this really well. But at the same time, she said it's her grandfather. And, you know, this is only 11.2%. So this either represents only part of what she's inheriting from her grandfather. So this is only part of the Cape Verdean ancestry. Or she just inherited such a small amount from that grandfather. But more than likely, you know, based on my knowledge of the ancestry of the islands, if she has any European reading, which I can't remember if she did, I don't know if we saw any, well, some of that European reading, especially any sort of Iberian, Portuguese, or Spanish, might be from that Cape Verdean ancestry of hers. So let's continue, because there's a lot more video. So, it says, in the last 200 years, your ancestors may have lived in the following locations. So again, 11.2%, and here it says Cape Verde, highly likely match. And really what it's saying here by highly likely match and what that little paragraph she said before, they're basically saying, because we see so many of your genetic matches who also have this Senegambian and Guinean ancestry reading, and they show, they list Cape Verde as their ancestral location, because we're seeing both that percentage reading and those people also putting Cape Verde, we are then saying that it is highly likely you also come from Cape Verde. So that's literally what it is. They're just saying, we see a lot of people in your genetic matches who come from Cape Verde and have this Senegambian Guinean reading as well. So you see when I kind of zoom out on the map, look, it shows this region and then right here. Yeah, so this is this is showing all the different communities that they are defining within the Senegambian and Ghanaian percentages. And then specific out of all of those, these are the ones, the ones in Cape Verde where they are finding her matches are uh, showing their ancestral location. Evidence of recent an ancestry weaker to stronger. Cabo Verde is an island right off of the coast of West Africa. See, this is West Africa. 
Now, the interesting thing about Cabo Verde is it was colonized by the Portuguese. So there is a lot of um, Portuguese. The language there is a lot of um, Portuguese. So my grandfather had said that as he was growing up, he actually spoke Portuguese. And then he learned English. And then slowly over the years, he kind of forgot. So if we go ahead and break this down again. All right, there we go. So it says Cabo Verde has, or Cape Verde, has 21 administrative regions. And we found the strongest evidence of your ancestry in the following two. Brava and Sao, is that Sao Felipe? I think it's Sao yeah, Brava Felipe. Brava and Sao Felipe. And then it says we did not detect enough evidence of recent ancestry from Gambia, Guinea, or Senegal. And so this is so freaking interesting. Oh my goodness, I can almost cry. So what it's saying, you know, exactly what I said before, it's detecting a lot of genetic matches from Cape Verde, um, you know, or genetic matches that say they are ancestries from Cape Verde. And even more specifically, those matches are saying they're from Brava and Sao Felipe. So, you know, if she does her family tree, her grandfather and his parents and so on, she'll probably find that most of the family is in Brava and Sao Felipe. Back where I'm from in Rhode Island, my father's father's side of the family is strong, strong, strong Cape Verdean heritage. Um, I have, I don't know if I ever did videos, but going to the... Um, Cape Verdean Club, all of that. A lot of I think in the Peter Gomes episode, I think he had talked about his family also being in Rhode Island. So I'm curious if anyone knows, is there a strong connection between Cape Verde and immigration to Rhode Island or maybe a bit more specifically just the New England region? Um, I mean, New York City kind of just makes sense. But like I'm thinking, you know, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts sort of thing the cape verdean dishes foods culture super super strong but as you see right here is like this is the darkest area oh here we go here we go so brava this is the darkest area where it's showing that my ancestry comes from and of course this one right here is saying sao felipe and so this lets you know things. If you're curious about Senegambian and Guinea history, these are some of the things. Like, it just breaks down some stuff, right? And this is a Senegalese tradition. Oh, my goodness. And then, look, guys, it actually... Okay, so this is where it gets real good. So get to know your relatives Predicted third cousin has roots in Gambia, this FB, then TV has roots in Cape Verde, roots in Cape Verde. So third cousin, third cousin, third cousin, fourth cousin. Um, so it'd be interesting for her, you know, she builds out her family tree and she builds out the family trees of these matches. Could they find some sort of connection? Um, and, you know, she knows it's going to be through her grandfather's family. So, you know, she can be specific in her research. Shows you all, Emmy, some of my relatives that have these roots here. Oh, my goodness. FB predicted third cousin from Gambia, Candida Tavares. And then let's see, he has a picture. So let's click on him. I don't know these people here personally he was just active in the last day he lives in new york new york so freaking interesting genetic relationship he's predicted to be a third cousin um let's look at this 39 cents a morgan <laughs> 39 cent a morgan now, the question that I have with this is, uh, you know, we talked about endogamy with Cape Verdeans because of the island. I don't know if they have endogamy, but if they do, a 39 centimorgan match would be difficult to place if it's, you know, a true match or if it's just an endogamous match, which means that you probably wouldn't find how you were related. CM stands for Centimorgans, and again, I think I'm pronouncing that right. 
Yeah. Um, me and my son have over 3,000 center mortgages in common. Hence, it was like, this is your child. Y'all are parent-child relationship. No ifs, ands, or buts. And then it kind of shows you where we share DNA. Oh. And then it goes down to say, it looks like we had a second great-grandparent in common. That's interesting. And then it shows our breakdown in our relationship, where I am, where he is. Um, so if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Or if you have anything else you would like me to take a closer look at as far as my ancestry goes, let the me The full know. breakdown. <laughs> so okay. Know. Okay, so we're, we're kind of getting a breakdown here. Um, because for the Cape Verde and the big thing is where's, you know, is there that European in there, especially from the Portuguese side? And is she getting any of that Jewish ancestry, which, uh, Peter Gomes didn't have in his admixture, but it was his Y DNA signature. So is she getting a small percentage? These are my results. And let's see. And once again, thank you, God. Okay, so 11.1% Northwestern European, 6.3% British Irish, Scandinavian. Okay, the Southern European, 2.2%. We have Spanish, Portuguese, 1.4%. So maybe not a whole lot of that, um, but maybe that, you know, that Southern European is coming from the Cape Verdean. And then some of that other European as well. For listening to and interesting and she she has 3.7 percent native american with some small percentages of chinese so 4.2 percent asian native american i wonder if she's ever gone into that before 0.2 percent would be like a second great grandparent maybe a great grandparent where she really didn't inherit that much um but that that's that's interesting if she does her family tree she might be able to find where is that coming from so, and don't see. forget to thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already a family member, and leave a comment below and let me know. And also, let me know what do you prefer if you've taken multiple tests, DNA tests. All ancestry. of them. 23andMe, MyHeritage, Ancestry, Family Tree DNA, Living DNA, um, uh, the Nebula Whole Genome Sequence. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's probably more out there too. Um, I'm trying, I feel like there's a big one that I'm missing, but I might just be thinking of databases like Jedmatch. but, um, I, that was an okay video. I kind of wish she'd gone into some more of the percentages, but I get it. Her focus was the Cape Verdean ancestry. So she kind of just stuck on that one page for a while. It certainly is very interesting. It is very, uh, interesting to see that they're able to pull that out for her. So it may be something to say that if you do have Cape Verdean ancestry, maybe 23andMe would be the better way to go. Although for anyone who has Ancestry.com and has done a DNA test, um, especially if uh, if Tanisha has done, you know, she checks her updates, comment below. Let me know. Are they picking up that Cape Verde now? as one of the communities or is it still you know is it just through 23andme but i'll have to see if she does any update videos especially you know 4.2 percent native american that's pretty interesting and a lot of people are always looking for some percentage of native american and usually it's like one or two percent you know at best but like a 4.2 percent I would say that's a pretty confident one, especially, you know, because of a continental level. She doesn't have any sort of other ancestry that would indicate Asian ancestry, which might get confused for Native American. Um, so if she does her family tree, getting back to second great grandparents or maybe even third great grandparents, um, you know, maybe she'll find a fully Native American ancestor. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. I do hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. That really does help me out. If you'd like to get access to my content early or even get access to exclusive content, be sure to become a patron of mine on Patreon. And not only will you get all of that access to my content early and the exclusive stuff, but you'll also be helping and support the channel. If you'd like to subscribe, just click right about here. It is completely free to do so. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.